Hello, in this modern OpenGL tutorial, we're going to be looking at a directional light. So we are advancing quite a bit now into the different lighting mechanics that you can use in OpenGL. We've looked at lighting maps to be able to shine a light and have it affected on the object differently depending on what sort of material particular object or particular part of the object is so metal will be shinier than wood for example obviously if let's say your wood has some sort of varnish on there that would have a shine compared to let's say regular wood that sort of stuff you can now implement using lighting maps we've looked at other basic materials basic lighting all of that good stuff but there's a few main types of lights that you can use in your game there's directional lights there's point lights there's spotlights we'll be covering point lights and spotlights in a separate video but directional lights are i would say the most basic version of lights in 3d graphics in general so if i just zoom in a second so we got this object let's say i've got this image off google there'll be a link in the description if you want to check this out so we've got this object on this image and as you can see there's sort of arrows coming from some sort of light source a directional light doesn't have a an origin it does i mean a a position but that's what i want to say it's infinitely far away so you can think of it as a light source that's infin infinitely far away so if for example you had five cubes it doesn't really matter what material they are but they're all the same and they were rotated the same way but they were positioned all over the place so let's just say one was when we don't really have a concept of distance in miles or kilometers in our engine but let's just say if it was a hundred miles away from each other each one of them were in any direction the actual light the directional light would affect each individual box object the same because it has no starting position you can't get any closer to the light source because you might think if we move in this direction you get closer to the light source technically you could say that's true but if it has no original location no original position and it's infinitely far away it's still going to be infinitely far away so that's why a directional light is you directional light is sort of just the general light you have in the scene and then you use spotlights and point lights to enhance your scene to create more specific stuff so yeah oh, here's a good example if you have a game that's set on some flat or some island for example the directional light could be the the sun for example if you're not really going vertically up you're not going into space not you can't really get any nearer to the sun then you could think of that as a directional light and a lot of the time that is thought of as a directional light in a lot of games again it depends on what sort of game you're playing if you're playing a game that you can go into space and you can get to the star or the sun then that really wouldn't be a directional light that would be a different light but more, more on different types of lights in a separate video so to code this is pretty simple first of all we need to go to the fragment shader because like i said it doesn't have a position or an original position it's going to comment out this but what it does have is a direction so semicolon let's scroll down zoom out a bit so in the diffuse lighting just need to modify this slightly so let's just comment out light direction because though we're going to have a light direction again we we want to leave this code just in case you want to change in case we need it later on so light direction equals normalize negative light dot direction so that's all we have to do because we're not working out the difference between the position and the actual fragment shader position we don't have to do that because all we are concerned about is the light direction so 
if we go to our main.cpp file that's it for the actual light and uh, the shaders what we want to do first off if we go to where we are building our shader programs comment this out because we're not going to actually be using the lamp shader in this video simply because we don't want any sort of light source with an origin position like an initial position we're going to be using these vertices but what we're going to be using are is this array of different cube positions so we're going to put it all uh we're going to spawn several cubes very similar to what we've done so i'm not going to really explain this too much and you can see the, the variance in having different cubes so if we scroll down we don't need the light vertex array object anymore because like i said we're not doing the lamp shader so if we just comment this out still need the diffuse map and all all of that good stuff so if we scroll down that looks all good we've got to do a few changes within the while loop because can actually comment this out this as technically as it's not going to be used it wouldn't affect it if i had it in but i just commented out anyway so if you go to the part where we're using the lighting shader if you can if I zoom in you can see this lighting position location again we don't have an original position anymore but we don't need that but what we do need the gl int light direction location equals gl get uniform location and for this all we put is lighting shader dot program light dot direction the actual view position location that stays the same because the actual what's this moan about yeah okay that's fine we obviously need to update this again it's going to comment this out i'm going to put gl uniform free f this needs to be light direction location but for the values, we're just going to put some arbitrary values in terms of the direction. Zero point, negative 0 0.2f, negative 1.0f, negative 0.3f. So we've got all of that. The view position location, which is just the camera's position, is fine. The ambient and the diffuse specular don't need to change that you can modify it if you wanted but it's not needed for this particular video so if we scroll down again we're not modifying the model view or the projection at all we we'll still need the textures but what we don't need is this lamp shader anymore we can comment that out right here and now what we're going to do is create a for loop so what i'm going to do is you know what i'm just going to delete this it'll just be slightly easier so if i do glm colon colon map four so a four by four matrix i'm going to call it model gl bind vertex array and this is going to take the box vertex array object and now we're going to do four glu int i equals zero i less than 10 and it's going to be i plus plus model equals glm colon colon four by four matrix Pretty simple stuff we've done this in a previous video so don't need to explain this too much we're just going to translate it this is pr pretty much exactly the code that we've done before sometimes we only want one cube sometimes we want several can't make up our mind can we cube positions it's going to be taking the iterator as the index now we're going to put gl float not flush float angle equals 20.0 f times by i 
model equals GLM colon colon rotate. And for the rotation, it's going to take the model again. For the angle, it's going to put angle. What was we going to put? Yeah, I forgot. Oh, it's a vector. So GLM colon colon vec free. And for this, we are just going to put 1.0f, 0.3f. So these are the axes. 0.5f, and we're just going to uniform the 4x4 matrix. So GL uniform matrix 4fv, because it's 4 float values, model location, which is what we created above. We don't, again, we don't really need to, need to concern ourselves too much with this because. We've already covered it in another video. It takes one and GL underscore false. GLM colon colon value underscore pointer model GL draw arrays GL underscore triangles. And this is a simple stuff, what we've done before. Starts at zero, it's got 36 different vertices. So if we put a semicolon there, just need to GL bind the vertex array to zero. So just unbind it, put a zero here. Now we should actually be ready to run this bad boy. So if we run it, build failed. I forgot about this because we commented out the light vertex array object. There's no need for us to delete it. I can't delete it anymore. So the spill succeeded. Okay, so we got our different object. We got all of our objects. So, so all of these objects are affected by the light the same. Obviously, there are angle differences, and that's what makes the what's it called the what am I thinking of the actual shading different the intensity of the light affecting it different but in terms of their position that doesn't matter because the light is coming from one direction the objects are affected exactly the same they are just as dark they are just as bright the specular lighting will affect them just the same way and it's the angle that makes the lighting affect it differently there isn't much more to it to directional lighting it's a very basic form of lighting the next video will cover an advanced form of lighting and we'll advance on that and we'll create some really really cool stuff with lighting because when you see a lot of games especially games that really look really really good in terms of graphical fidelity what you'll find is when you sort of start going under the layers and start doing programming and graphics what you'll see is a lot of it's due to lighting the way lighting affects it has like the biggest difference because you can you by using normal and lighting you can make an object look like it's got depth even though it's just a flat texture I think that is pretty radical. Well, okay, that's for a different video. And this has just been a modern OpenGL video covering directional lights. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description. Alongside that, there will be a link to the GitHub page, which has all the source code from the videos. Finally, these videos are based off the works of open.gl and learnopengl.com. I would highly recommend checking those links out. There's links in the description, or there will be, simply because these tutorials are amazing. They, like I said, these videos are based on that. These videos are good and they provide a lot of information, but those tutorials, what they do do is they explain each individual line in more depth 
they have diagrams to accompany a lot of the code that they're doing so it's just a great way of learning because you can watch the video go to the written form and just compare not compare them you can just use them as a great sort of learning technique i think i'm blabbing on now i think you get the picture watch the video and check out the websites in the description so as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day